Cameron. Thanks, Madam Deputy Speaker. I would like to congratulate the Backbench Business Committee and the Right Honourable Member for Chesterham and Amersham for bringing this debate and for being an autism champion herself. As a clinical psychologist, I have worked with uh, many people who have autistic spectrum disorder, and I would like to put on record that it is a privilege to be a member of the all-party parliamentary group and to be a co-sponsor of this debate today. Autistic spectrum disorder is a pervasive, lifelong developmental disorder which affects people's social interactions. It impacts upon how people communicate with others, how they relate to people and how they experience the world around them. Being a professional is one thing, but the key lesson that we must learn is that the greatest insights come from those who have autistic spectrum disorder and their families, and we must listen very, very carefully um, to what they tell us. We know that how we interact with individuals with ASD and their families can have a huge impact upon their quality of lives. Negative public reactions can encourage people and their families to avoid situations and social contact. This can lead to them becoming socially isolated and also experiencing mental health difficulties. I will indeed. Obviously, the, the debate has covered a lot of the structural and supportive things that need to be done, but is it not also just throw down the gauntlet to us that we need to change our view? We think of people with autism as finding difficulty in seeing the world as we see it. We actually need to see the world as they see it. Mm. Um, I think, as, as usual, my honourable friend makes an excellent point, and yes, we need to focus upon uh, not uh, people with autistic spectrum disorders' difficulties, but their full potential, and indeed um, have greater awareness of the world as they view it themselves. Um, research indicates that 66% of autistic people and 68% of their families have reported feeling socially isolated. 70% of autistic individuals are reported to have mental health disorders such as anxiety or depression and autistic adults have also been reported to be nine times more likely to die from suicide. There is a clear need, I feel, to address comorbidity and particularly mental health difficulties. One of my constituents who contacted me also advised that the too much information video and campaign, which must be commended, um, had really resonated with her. She has an eight-year-old daughter who has autism and she shared with me some of her personal experiences. Her daughter is extremely vulnerable and sensitive to everyday sights, sounds, touch and smells, which then cause her anxiety, panic, obsessive worries and despair. She cannot cope with changes to her environment and she is prone to becoming very distressed when in public. As a result, she has experienced negative community responses and also from school peers. Her reaction has been reluctance to go back to school and withdraw from her extracurricular activities, which sadly means she is at risk of becoming further isolated. It is clear from this story, um, which was common actually amongst those who had contacted me, that we all need to do more on many realms. I also recently attended a local school, Milton Primary School, within my constituency, where it was highlighted to me issues with a lack of understanding amongst peers and their parents about pupils with autism. The head teacher is now engaged in very good work to increase understanding through planned awareness sessions. This is a fantastic local development and I commend her on this, but again it highlights teacher training and awareness in schools is key. There is also, as has been touched on, a need to raise awareness and understanding amongst employers to help support people with autism into employment. Having a job is about earning a living, but it also contributes to psychological well-being. It can provide people with a sense of belonging and purpose and build confidence and self-esteem. The autism employment gap is even bigger than the general disability employment gap. Only 15% of autistic adults in the UK are actually in full-time work. The Association of Graduate Careers Advisory Services has also reported that 26% of graduates are unemployed. Mainstream employment programmes currently on offer are failing those with autism, failing to capitalise on their potential. 
I urge that uh, the Minister would ensure appropriate support for people with autism, that this will be an issue covered by the proposals in the Disability Employment White Paper. In uh, 2011, the SNP Scottish Government launched the, the Scottish Strategy for Autism, declaring that autism is a national priority. <coughs> This attempts to, tie, um, to improve diagnosis and assessment and create consistent service standards. It also helped to establish one-stop shops. This is an issue that must continue to be supported and I offer my um, full cooperation um, and involvement with the, the Honourable Member from Motherwell to save our local one-stop shop. In concluding, we all need to be champions of autism. I'd ask the Minister to support an awareness campaign, promote training for teachers and local authority staff, tackle issues um, in uh, the disability employment paper, ensure more clinicians are trained and consider waiting time guidelines. Society cannot continue to fail people with autistic spectrum disorder, so let's do all that we can together to ensure that we succeed. Thank you.